Well, we want to first of all take the opportunity this morning as we begin this uh, Sunday morning service to first of all, we want to thank each and every one for um, viewing us live. Uh, thank you for tuning in as well. And also for those on our television programs, we want to thank you for um, tuning in to One Accord Church this morning. And we also want to take this opportunity to invite you to come join us at One Accord Church. What do we believe? We believe in doing it in one accord with God, His way, and His way only. We believe that the Word of God is what will set us free from everything we're going through. We also believe that the Word of God will protect us from the enemy. Amen. We'd love for you to come join us. Well, you know, you know, everybody kind of gets prepared, you know, for, um, for Halloween. And this is not a Halloween message, but this is, um, you know... As a Christian, who out there is trying to scare you and trying to put fear in you and who's trying to put all these evil spirits on you? His name is Satan, right? Well, you're going to say, well, wow, this preacher's going to, I am, I'm going to preach on the devil. Because <laughs> it's good to know our Christian walk. It's good to hear all the promises. It's, it's good to hear about all that, all that good stuff. But you've got to understand something, you know, one of the biggest reasons Jesus came was to <coughs> excuse me, set us free from the bondage of Satan. And we got to understand that, yes, um, I've had several people to tell me, I don't like to hear nobody preach about the devil. I said, well, you need to know about him because he ain't going nowhere. He's not going to leave you alone just because you don't learn about him. And, you know, the uh, military, one of the biggest things they did, they trained you to uh, detect the enemy. And what this is, is the question of it is, so, because so many people think that the devil is, is really just a figment of our imagination. So what is the devil like this morning? Well, what's the devil like? This is a question that we need to look at for what reasons so we can see who's really running the show in our own lives. If, if, we don't, if we'll be honest, um, Satan gets into a lot of things and we don't recognize he's doing it because we don't understand how he works. So I, with that being said, this is some questions and some answers about the devil this morning. Now, I would like for you to take your, your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 8, um, verse 44. And then we're going to go in John 10, 10 to begin with. But yes, this message is about our enemy. Satan is your enemy, correct? You need to understand that there's nothing about him you need to like. There's, there's nothing about him you want to be involved in. And, and there's nothing about him that, sh that, that, we shouldn't, um, that we should want in our lives. You say, well, pastor, we don't serve the devil. Well, this scripture is going to show us something a whole lot different in this world the bible tells us in john 8 44 that ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and he is also the father of it he's a liar but he's the father of that lie what does it mean that he that he is the lie and we need to understand that. Also, I love what John 10.10 10 says. And it says, because we're talking about the enemy today. And, and I want us to get a good view of this enemy. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Well, we need to ask ourselves these questions this morning. You know, because we're living in a society where the Christian so-called Christian people are moving totally away from what it means to be a Christian. Amen? Well, Satan, we need to ask ourselves a question. Is Satan real? Is, is he a real personality? Or is he just an evil force? An evil force, as some people would like to say. Well, if he's just an evil force, we should just remove the D from devil, and what will we have? An evil force. We, you know, if, if that's the way people would like to look at it. See, Satan is real, though. The Bible actually says 
He is a personality. Now, I, I've covered these scriptures time and time again, but I want you to look at this because we need to understand what he is like so that we will be careful not to get in a snare or, or get captive by him or, or fall into his trap because Satan's always setting traps for Christians. Especially whenever we don't, we're not aware of just who he is. You know, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, 1, I got some scriptures I want to share with you. Because if he is just a, um, a, an, an evil force, that well, then that messes up what the Bible says. Because Matthew 4, 1 says, Then was Jesus led up in the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, with that being said, I want you to understand something. He, and he said in Revelations 22, and he laid hold on the dragon. Now, he, he did what? He laid hold on him. That old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, listen, if he is nothing but what the world calls an evil force, Jesus would have never been able to put his hands on him. He had to get hold of him. So he's real. Have you ever seen him? Well, no, I don't believe I have. You, you know, if you see people that don't know Jesus and, and, and murdering and all this stuff, you're seeing him. See, so we got to understand his personality. See, is, and, and some people ask this question in, in, in getting in this message is, is the devil now in hell? No. But he will be there. <laughs> Revelations 20.10 tells us this. And the devil that deceived them was cast into what? Uh, look, cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, he's not there yet, but he's going there. But guess what? He may not be there and for right now, even though we know where he's going, for right now the enemy, Satan, the devil, and all his evil spirits are actively tempting and destroying in the world right now. Who are they actively tempting and destroying? Well, everybody that claims to be a Christian. Because um, 1 Peter 5, 8, Peter gives us a warning to, that we should listen to because this scripture is so important. It says, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Listen, he is seeking because that means that he, Satan's whole purpose is to destroy, to seek out and destroy you. And so, with that being said, what is the devil like this morning? You know, I think about this, and please don't take offense to it. But, you know, a lot of times when we think about Halloween, you know, we put on masks to try to see how hard we can scare somebody. True? You can say yes. When you watch a horror movie, you don't want to see somebody grinning sweet and pretty. Oh, that's so cute. How many of you watch horror movies so you can see cute? Y'all are quiet this morning. Good Lord. Y'all just must have all went trick-or-treating or something. I don't know. But you know, the bottom line of it is, is, is and the more we can scare somebody, the, 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 the more we like it. Well, see, that's what Satan loves. The more he can scare you and put fear in you, the more he likes it. So we need to understand Satan is not this cute little thing running around with a pitchfork and a little red tail and and, and no, he is evil. And he is nothing that you need to play around with. And, and, and that's our problem. We, we're playing around with so much evil in this world because we, we just seem to take for granted that, oh, he can't do but so much. Well, John 8, 44, I just read to you, said he's a murderer. Well, I think that pretty much reaches the top of the pile of bad. He's a murderer. The Bible said he was a murderer from the beginning. Satan is a murderer, and his weapon of choice is sin. And But also, the Bible also tells us that God's warnings about um, this sin, and let's look at Satan, how he 
kind of set up the murder concept, how he sets things up. He uses sin. Remember uh, in Genesis 3.3, 3, remember the warning about the for, forbidden fruit? But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you what? Okay, first of all, that was death that was presented, and, and they really didn't comprehend what was going on because right after he said that, verse 4 in Genesis 3, 4, Satan convinced Adam and Eve that they would not what? That they will surely not die. You're not going to die. God said you will. Satan said you won't. And guess what? Their disobedience to the truth led them to death. In Romans 5, 12, in their disobedience. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, and that all have sinned. Satan delights into deceiving people not to believe God's word. If Adam and Eve would just listened and says, no, we're not going, God said this, and this is what we're going to do. God said, don't do this, and, and, and we are not going to do it. Now, that, that right there will preach all by itself in a whole nother realm because we wouldn't be in the trouble we're in as a nation if this was first. Our, our school systems, our, our government would not be in the mess it would be in if this is how they run it. I mean, we've just left in a world with the lesser evil. Well, that one's not quite as bad as that, and that one's not quite as bad as that, and let's see who's a lesser evil. Listen, we need to understand something. The reason Satan is doing this is because Satan enjoys this type of murder and sin. He enjoys getting people to believe in his lie. It's time that we all wake up in this nation and realize that Satan's delight is in your destruction. Let me say it to you again. Satan gets a kick out of your destruction. But God delights in our salvation this morning. And we need to look at Satan, the murderer, and, and look how he has affected society this morning about how he uses murder. First of all, Satan tempts people to murder through envy. Now there's Bible characters like Cain. Cain had envy and caused him to commit murder. People, when we're talking about envy, people envy what other people got and will kill them to get what they got. Who's in charge of that whole plot? Satan, the devil. And, and the thing about it, of it is, is we don't see this because we get blinded by just like Cain did. He got blinded by envy. In fact, the Bible tells us that Satan tempts people to murder also through lust. Few people, remember Herod? Through lust. How about David? I'm paraphrasing, but he had a whole lot more wives than he needed. But he saw another one that he wanted. So what happened? He wanted her, so he killed for her. So who, so who got in David? Satan. Because he, he's all about murder because he will uh, tempt people to do things because of either, whether it's envy, whether it's love, lust, also greed. My goodness gracious, people are killing each other. They're greed. They want to have it all. They want to keep it all. And if anybody tries to get it, they murder them. Sound anything like society now? Well, they had the same problem back in Bible days, but the bottom line of it, so Satan, he's been a murderer, as the Bible says, from the beginning. He's always been trying to tempt and do everything he can to make the Christian fall. Look at Satan, the murderer, and destruction he does to our own selves. Satan will actually plant seeds in you to destroy your own self. Remember Judas? After he betrayed Jesus? What did he do? After he came to himself, what did he do? Who got in him? Satan. Satan actually can get inside of a person and cause them to destroy their own self. That bears repeating. Satan will get inside of you and he will mess you up so bad that you will want to take your own life. People commit suicide because why? 
Satan convinced them of a what? A lie. He convinces them. So Satan is, is evil, and we need to recognize his evil, and we need to stay away from it. How about see how Satan, he tempts people to suicide, as we just spoke of, but by causing them to feel despair, causing them to feel like they're unloved. Satan uh, gets inside and says, you know, you're never going to amount to nothing. Uh, you, you, you're no good. You're a mistake. I don't know why you do this. And, 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 and it's all about destroying self-esteem. And listen, 100% of the people that end their lives, somehow or another Satan has got in them to, to convince them otherwise of God and his promises. So we, but we play with Satan like he's some toy, like we can put on the mask and, and take it off when we get ready. Can I tell you this morning, when you put on Satan's mask and you go out there and do what Satan wants you to do, you can't get rid of that mask so easy. You think, see, Satan convinces you, look, put on my mask. Let's go out there and do something we shouldn't do. Let me tell you something. There's always repercussions to sin. And, and whenever you put on that mask, Satan don't let you just take it off when you get ready. Satan's not going to just let you run out there and, and, and live in the world and, and do all these things you shouldn't do and then say, well, I believe I'll take off my mask today. I, I'm going to church. I believe I'll take off my mask. I'm really tired of messing with that stuff. Let me tell you something. There's so, no, so many people this day and time, with, and I'll just use drugs as an example and alcohol, that once you put on that mask, it's almost impossible to take it off. Satan wants to deceive you in believing that you can do it for a little while, but then he's got you. Satan loves to be the murderer. He, he, Satan's desire is your destruction. Correct? Also, the Bible says in John 8, 44, we just read it, he is a liar. Does anybody know what a liar is? <laughs> Somebody that don't tell the truth. Right? I mean, he's a liar, but the Bible says, the Lord said, and he's the father of this. So let me ask you a question. Don't nobody raise your hand. Anybody lied? You say, oh, that, that's, that's not what he's talking about, preacher. <laughs> yes, it is. Because when we lie, and, 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 and I could beat my own self up over that. I know, well, I, it was just a little white lie. It was just a little blue lie. I don't know what that would mean. But we, we, we want to downplay it. And, 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 but and honestly, listen, somebody get this and grasp this in their brain. He is the father of it. So when we are tempted, to, we are tempted to tell a lie and we tell it who took over. We need to understand this. How many of us love the Lord? We all do, right? Well, preacher, we're all human, and we've all fallen short, and I've heard it all. We, we, you know, I'm just human, and, and there's only so much I can do, and, 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 and I know that I can't be perfect, and, 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 and I know that I'm flawed, but you've got to understand, you didn't read the same Bible I read. Jesus came and set us free, free from that. I mean, you know, I always thought the lie would get me out of trouble. You know, and if you were raised like I was, if you, your report cards, y'all might not remember this, but we used to get report cards, they were a piece of paper. <laughs> they were a card, folded over with your name, your grade, and you open it up, and there was your A to E. And, and, and it was just simple, A plus, A minus, A, and, it went, and E was it. E was excellent, that's as low as you could go. And... and and, and, and I would lie, because I knew I'd tow the beating if I brought home a report card with an E. So I, I was an expert of turning that E into a B. And I'd, I'd bring my report card home, and, and I don't care how slick I thought I was. They saw through it. But they allowed me to share the lie. And I mean, they just sat there, and I already knew when I opened that mouth to share that lie, I could feel that leather. And it, it was coming. 
And I, and, but, but then they were just, mine were slick. They'd let me tell the lie. And then, as, and then they'd wait a few days and ask me the same question over again. And I forgot the lie that I told. So I told another lie. And then another one. And then they would say, look, just, just to let you know, we know that you've been lying. Now, how many licks you get, it determines on when the lie stops. Then I'd do the old thing we all did. Everybody done it. I'd start crying. <laughs> I could, see, I, I'd start saying, well, I just, I just didn't want so-and-so. I, I didn't get a beating for the E. I got a beating because the E became a B out of a lie. And I got a beating because I kept lying. But, you know, it's funny when you, you, you let go of that lie. If anybody, we were talking about that a while ago. If anybody's had, ever had to go pick your own weapon of choice, which is a switch, and, and, and then they, you always had shorts, so they would tear them legs up. It looked like a candy cane. They would tear you up. Look, the thing about it of it is, is you, all these lies led to you getting whooped. And then, listen, during the middle of that whooping, you'd finally come clean. Well, I, yeah, the truth is, I failed the grade. The truth is, I made a mess. See, you only come to that whenever the pressure gets too hot in the kitchen. Correct? All right. But see, Satan is, it doesn't care about the lie. He wants to convince you to continue to lie because he's the father of lies. But anything that Satan's involved with is going to fall. Anything that you do in, as a liar, listen, church, we just got to stop lying. People say, you ever watch that show where someone had no choice? It was a Christmas program. They, were, they, they had to tell the truth. No matter what. Somebody asked them a question, they had to tell them the truth. In fact, they, they were, had to tell it even though they didn't want to tell it. Someone would come up and then work. How do I look? Stupid. Did I say that? I, I, can you imagine all you married folks? How do I look today in this dress, honey? Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. You, you're thinking on something nice to say, which is a good thing. And if you take the fifth, you're already guilty. You, all you can do is say, honey... I love you no matter what you wear. That ain't a lie. Just don't ask me how you look in that. But if we all had to tell the truth, wouldn't that be something? Can you imagine? Look, think about that. But I want you to even think about this before you think about this. Satan is the father of it. So he is the creator of this lie. And whenever we lie, we're letting Satan run the show. Remember the first recorded lie ever? I read it to you. Ye shall not surely die. Who said that lie? Satan. And as a result of that one lie, death had flowed from the lie through centuries and centuries. There was no death before the lie. So what does lie call? Death. That's pretty serious, ain't it? Preacher, I wish you'd get off this lie thing. I'm not really enjoying this very much. But see, I've learned one thing about the truth. You don't forget it. <laughs> you don't have to remember what you said because it was the truth. So we need to quit let Satan control what we say. Listen, the old saying is, if you haven't got nothing good to say, <laughs> I kind of like that. My wife says, what did you say? I said, Nothing. What you thinking? Nothing. She says, how can you do that? Easy. <laughs> Stop thinking. Amen. Look, men, we can shut off the thinking process. We can get in front of a television and zoom out the whole world. <laughs> and, and, and Jonah will be able to go and, and I And she says, have you heard a word I said? I said, no. Hey, it's better to be dumb about it than to lie. See, I'm trying to lighten up this thing with y'all because I know that kind of hits home. 
But we need to understand some lies are to expect from Satan or this. Remember, Satan promises freedom. Freedom to do what? Do whatever you want to in the world. Um, try this. Try this. We live in a society that says, well, let them try it. They got to all try it once. And they got all these things that s Satan promises that will give you freedom. And then listen, if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it gives you bondage. We need to understand that type of stuff puts us in bondage to the world. Promise, Satan promises good times, right? But what does it give us? Grief. Satan promises, oh, go do this, it'll be fun. It'll be great. But all it is, if it's not lined up with God, all it is ends up to frustration. And we need to realize that Satan is real and what he's out here to do is serious. Satan lies, not only to young and old alike, but all of us. We all better wake up because our young people in general, and I'm not saying here in this church, but all over the world, Satan is feeding the young people lies, and they're believing it. Now, do you know why a lot of the generations are believing a lie? It's because nobody's teaching them the truth. We need to understand something that we need to quit playing with Satan. We need to realize that Satan, whenever he catches you or puts you in a situation, that he'll destroy you. We need to understand that Satan is real. The devil is real. And, and, and he's not going to let up or quit just because we decide we're tired of it. You know, I think about somebody in our family unit that um, somebody made the statement, well, everybody's got to try it. Everybody's got to try drink and drugs. And you, no, you don't. You know, I used to blame family for the, the decisions I made. Well, you did it, so I thought I'd do it. How many of you heard this from uh, family members? Well, mom and dad, you messed up, so I deserve the right to try it myself. You know, why are you fussing me? Didn't you do this? Right? But what we've got to understand something is, is Satan is trying to get us deceived, and our young people are being deceived, and they're being destroyed. And, and, and it's not nothing to, to joke about. When, and, and, and when we talk about the age in our, our young people, we're willing to let the world teach them right from wrong. We're willing to say, look, I know you don't want to go to church, and I know that you don't want to be a part of this, but um, we need to say no. We need to, we need to say, you don't know who you're playing with. You don't know just what he'll do because we don't really know what he'll do. All we know that Satan is real and, and that he's in, that the Bible talks about him, and, and we, we know about him, but we don't know his personality. We don't know what he's capable of doing. But you should know the day that he's a murderer. And we do know that he's a liar. And I got people in my family that have been lied to over and over again. And when, once you believe a lie, you can become the lie. I got people telling me, and I, I laugh because it's so silly. I have people tell me that says, look, I know I do drugs. I know I smoke pot. But I don't do cocaine. And, and, and I love this. Well, it's going to be legal sooner or later. It don't matter whether they make it legal or illegal. It's still destroying the temple. And, 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 and we need to quit making excuses because Satan, Satan's deceiving everybody. The reason why I'm saying this to you all today is because, yes, people go out and you're going to see a lot of violence take place over people going out and trying to do evil. When I was a kid, I got to admit it. You know, we, we, were, we were on the farm. We, we did Hall Halloween. But all we did was find one of Mama's sheets that she didn't find missing, poke some holes in it, and, and run around to the country houses and, and eat a bunch of candy. We didn't have to worry about the violence and the meanness of stuff going on. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not going to try to shoot you nothing. Nowadays, you've got to have radar over your candy before you let anybody eat it. Make sure there's nothing poisonous in it. And, and see, Satan is using all of this, and, and, and he's using all this evil, and this evil is, is growing and growing. If you don't believe me, look on your television. My goodness gracious, everything 
is about scaring you to death. Everything is about Satan and how he can kind of um, bring fear. How many of you know that the Bible says, God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind? So if God didn't give us a spirit of fear, why, why do we think that it's okay to do this? Did I not tell you what the Scripture said? If God didn't give you the spirit of fear, who did? Okay, so when we scare somebody slam to death, who's in charge of that? It's something to think about. It, it, it really is because, um, you know, I, I was sitting down the other night and like scared me to death. I never, I didn't see the commercial coming up. I was about half asleep. Then all of a sudden there was something come up on there. My Joan just laughed at me. I like jumped, slam out of the recliner. I didn't even see that, that terrible face pop up there on the commercial. But, I, but you know, we got to realize that it's all around us. And our kids are depending on us to show them how to uh, recognize evil, church. We got to teach our children about Satan and his real. A man told me one time, I've never forget long as life. He said, I believe in heaven, but I don't believe in hell. I said, well, why do you want to go to heaven if there's no hell? He said, I don't believe in evil. I said, well, what do you think Jesus came to the cross to set us free from? We don't want to talk about evil. Now, if I was up here and I was like, man, I was preaching about deliverance and healing and, and uh, dead man get up and walking and the blind man being able to see and the lame getting to walk, you, you, we'd just be going, praise the Lord, glory, hallelujah. But when I want to teach you about the, the enemy that, that uh, set out to destroy Jesus, we don't, we don't want to hear that. We've got to hear all of the gospel. We've got to understand he's real. Because let me tell you something, just like my grandchildren and children, the reason why they're out there messed up is because they believed evil. God didn't put them into places they're in. Our young children and, and all those on the streets, God didn't put them there. Satan did. And, and yes, we need to, you know what the Bible says, be angry and sin not. I don't know about you, but I get mad when I see Satan destroying a young person's life. I get mad when I see a child pulled out there and got hooked on some kind of drug or something, and then they spend the rest of their life trying to get off of it. I get mad whenever I hear someone say, well, I want my child to experience everything. I want to knock them in the head with a backer stick. You don't want them to experience everything. You want to protect them from everything that Satan is. The church is supposed to be a... a a refuge. The church is supposed to be a, a place that brings people out from the darkness and into the light. The church is supposed to be a place that the gates of hell can't prevail. The church is supposed to be a place that teaches people right and wrong. And, and that's what the church is supposed to be. But we, but we, we, we got to fit in. No, we don't. You won't want to fit in when you go to the emergency room and see your child sitting there hooked up on IVs and everything where the drug went bad and, and destroyed them. Preacher's mad this morning. No, I'm just trying to tell you he's real because, see, I played with Satan. Yes, sir, I played with him. I spent half my life playing with him. And, and guess what I found out? through all the destruction and all the violence and everything else that took place, he's a liar. Everything he promised me, he lied about. The only hope I had was come out of the lie and, and, and come to Jesus. Satan, he, did, he will convince you as he did Cain and as he did so many of these people in the Bible, he will convince you to, uh, uh, of killing yourself he'll convince you of suicide he'll convince you that your life doesn't matter he will convince you to do all these things because if he convinces you of that lie then he'll destroy you he said in fact because he's a thief and in, in, in part three he's a thief john 10 10 said he to steal to kill and destroy to steal to kill and destroy now notice this to steal to steal what To kill. Anybody know what kill is? Okay, listen, that's simple. I'm just going to keep it simple. What's say? Keep it simple, stupid? Keep it simple. To steal, to kill.
to kill. But look, he ain't finished. What's the last one? Destroy. He wants to destroy the church. Satan is, is having a ball with all these classes that people are actually calling. Um, you, you know, you get to actually choose classes in some college, and they're all witchcraft, Wicca, all these classes they're teaching. In fact, satanic schools. Does anybody not kind of concerned about a satanic school? Who's going to be your instructor? Well, let me think just a minute. Maybe Satan. Maybe his demons. But when, I mean, come on, anybody want to ride a broom? I mean, I saw it in a college thing. They want, they're teaching witchcraft. What'd you learn today, honey? Well, I learned that if you give me any more lip, I'm going to turn you into a mouse. Hey, look, you think I'm kidding, right? They teach them all this garbage. And, and, and guess what? It's okay. They're trying to find a way. We want them to experience how to find their own way. I don't know what planet you jumped off of, but God says my way is the only way. My way is the truth and my way is the life. And he said the only way to the Father is through him, through Jesus. We need to get real. See, we got to get rid of this evil mess. We got to get rid of this stuff that, that promotes evil. You say, well, the preacher just said don't go out and do Halloween. Look, dress up as an angel. <laughs> Better yet, dress up as a prophet. <laughs> Give them a track. Do something nice. Look, Paul in the Bible if you know anything about Paul, Paul will tell you he became what he needed to become and went around who he needed to be so he could reach them. So yes, evil's not going nowhere, but we don't have to become part of the problem. We can be part of the solution. Someone says, well, I heard this church is having a tailgate or a, a trunk something where they come to church and get candy. Well, I don't know. I, listen, I'd rather they come get some candy out of a trunk in a church than I would for them to go to somebody's house that just finished doing a, a load of meth, cooking it, and got it mixed up in the candy. I, I mean, I, I'd rather, you know, we don't recognize Halloween. Well, good, Satan still does. So you got to learn to adjust so that we can reach people. See, we got these little pamphlets for a reason, see, you know, and, and that we can put a little something in it to say, okay, here, and then give them something to read and share. He's a thief. And he, he's a thief, and everything under him is all about stealing from you. See, a lot of false Christians, uh, not a lot of the word, not, well, they're false Christians too if they believe anything other than the Bible, but there's a lot of false prophets because he's a thief. The way Satan is, Satan is deceiving the church is because people is believing everything that's coming out of the mouth of the preacher that doesn't line up with this. If you're in a church that doesn't preach the word of God and stands on it, you're in a place where a thief is operating. If, if you're in a place where someone says, go ahead and do it your way, uh, we're still going to love you and Jesus is going to forgive you, you're doing it wrong. We need to show people out of what they're going through. We need to show people there's something better on the other side. We need to show people there, there's a light at the end of their tunnel. We need to show young people that are going through whatever they're going through right this very minute that whenever they come to Jesus, Jesus will remove all that mess from them. We need to teach them there's a better way than Satan's way. And if we don't, then the purpose of Satan to kill, destroy it's going to come true. Satan is nothing but a thief this morning. And, he's, and I know the one behind it all. Satan is evil. But Satan also, church, I want you to understand this. He is so evil that he tried to steal the throne of God. Anybody tried to steal the throne of God lately? Well, let me go on and tell you a fellow who tried it. Isaiah 14, verse 12. I want you to listen to this. He said, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? 
For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. The dude messed up. Now he tried to take, look, so you think Satan's worried about what he does to us? You think Satan cares that he's destroying the minds of our children and the minds of our adults with all the filthy garbage in this world? No, his whole purpose is, listen, he tried to take the throne. He couldn't take it, and he got nailed to the wall at the ground. But here's the bottom line. Guess what he's still going to do? He knows where he's headed, and he's going to try to carry everybody with him that he can. He can't defeat God, but he is going to try to take the Christian and lead them in a lie so that they will turn from God. Adam and Eve fell from that, that, that day when they believed the lie because Satan fed it to them. Satan don't care what it costs to get you or destroy you. He'll do it. He doesn't have no remorse because he sees you crying over someone dying of drug overdose. He doesn't sit there and feel sorry for you when he's run you down in a ditch. Satan don't say, well, I, I put them through enough. I believe I, I'll let them go. No, Satan don't care about us. <coughs> he cares about your destruction. Well, preacher, why are you beating us to death about it? Because if we don't realize that sin is his weapon, and the only way we can take that weapon away from him is to quit allowing sin to run more in our lives and allow the Word of God to be what's running our lives. Church, I, I know you don't want to hear this, but n nowhere in God's Word says you've got to sin. Y'all are the quietest folks I have ever seen today. Huh? If you get off sin, we might would praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. Jesus died on the cross to cleanse us from all sins. He died on the cross to give you hope. Have you got the sin? No. Show me where the Bible says you've got the sin. That's another lie from Satan. Why do you think Jesus took on the form of flesh? Why do you think Jesus took on the form of flesh? He was God. He could have come down with 10,000 angels and showed you who he was. He could have sat on the top of King of Kings, Lord, Lord. He could have sat on the top. But he came here in the form of man. He grew up as a child. Tell me if I'm wrong now. He grew up as a little child. He faced everything we faced as a normal child until he'd come of age. Am I right? Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. No, he did this. And, but why did he do this in the flesh? To show you that whenever you put Jesus in charge of your life, that you can overcome any and all sin. Did you know Satan tried to steal rightful worship from God? Matthew 4, 9. You know, Satan loves to get in music. And I'm going to go on and tell you that right now. Amen. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and what? Worship me. See, Satan wants everybody to worship him. We say, Well, we don't worship Satan. Let me tell you something. If you're living in sin, yes, you are. If you're allowing sin to control your circumstances, yes, you are. We got to understand something. Satan is going to do everything in his power. But guess the good the good news is, you say, Thank the Lord. The good news of it is, is we serve a risen Savior. We serve the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We serve the great I am. And let me tell you something, buddy. Whenever you turn away from the sin out of the darkness and turn into the light, you, there's blessings upon blessings. You've been cleansed of all your unrighteousness. All that mess that you got into is pushed under the, washed under the blood of Jesus. And whenever you accept Jesus Christ and you start living for him, you become an heir to God. Jesus becomes your friend. And listen, he, he said in the Bible, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Just think about this real simple country boy terms. 
The one that's destroying us has already been defeated. We should understand, and God has given us power and authority in the name of Jesus to be the ones to keep defeating him. Satan shouldn't be winning the battle in the church. The church has already been given the victory. We just got to start walking in it. What do you mean, preacher? Walking in it means saying no to sin, saying no to that garbage, and saying yes to Jesus. Satan's a liar. He's a deceiver. And guess what? One minister said, ain't you afraid to talk about him like that? He's defeated. I'm not afraid of Satan. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in him. Are you with me? I'm not afraid of what Satan can do. Let me think just a minute. Because we don't have but a minute. Let me think. What can he do? Send me to heaven? <laughs> Glory to God. He can't do nothing else. So listen, whenever we have the mentality of that, then Satan won't be running this world. We'll run Satan out of this world. The Bible says, and I'm closing with this scripture, in James 4, 7. <coughs> if you've ever had a scripture that you wrote down and carried it with you everywhere you get or memorized this scripture, this is a scripture I memorized. So many, many years ago. Because listen to what he said. This is the, the victory over Satan. Submit yourselves therefore to God. What does submit mean? It means surrender. Follow him. But listen to what he, but he says. You've got to do something else. You've got to resist the devil. Resist means you've got to put forth the effort. And that means saying no. But what's the good news? If you resist the devil, he will flee from you. How do you resist the devil this morning? Listen, here's how you resist the devil. If somebody come up to you right now and said, Look, I got me some drugs that would just make you just feel good. Come on, let me shoot it up your arm. What would you say to that person? You say, there ain't no way. In fact, if you don't leave right now, I'm going to knock you out. Amen? If somebody come up to your child while you're sitting there and say, here, I want you to try this new kind of candy. It, 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 it's, it is good. Let me tell you what you're going to say to them. You're going to say, you might pull out a gun and shoot him. You're going to say, no. See, that's what that means, resist the devil. You've got to learn to say no. How do you know what no means? The Bible is yes. Satan is no. Whenever we get the gumption to do it God's way, then we start receiving the blessings of God and the strength of God to overcome what you're going through. Now this morning, the reason this message is important because as a minister and, and every, all the counseling and stuff we're involved in, I see what happens when people surrender to Satan. But I also share with them that the one that's got them down is not the one that has to win. I show them how to submit themselves to Jesus because Jesus is the only way. I show them the way out of where they're going. My point is this morning, you might be like me. I used to say, well, Lord, I got to have a little bit of sin in my life. I, I, I ain't perfect. I got to keep some sin so that I'll feel normal. That's a lie. I serve a God right now this morning that if we would just surrender our will to his will and, and bring it before him, guess what he'll do? He'll set you free. He'll deliver you. He'll restore you. He will strengthen you. And better than that, he will protect you. He will never leave you alone. He will guide you and direct you. And the Holy Spirit that's inside of you will guide you to all truth. That's what the Bible says. Now, as this altar is open this morning, I want to ask you a question this morning. How important is it for you to live in victory? How important is it for you to see your family come out of the darkness? How important is it for you to see your children and grandchildren come out of the clutches of Satan? It starts with us. It starts with us. You've got to do it God's way. It's time the church stood up and woke up 
and put Satan where he belongs, away from us. Pastor, we can't. Yes, we can, because God promised. He just promised it. I just read it to you. So this morning as we open this altar up, no matter what your need is, no matter what you're going through, submit it. Submit it. Trust God. And ask God to give you the strength to overcome what you're going through for your family's sake, for your children and grandchildren. And no matter who you are in this room today, if you've made this statement, well, I don't know that I know Jesus this morning. None of this is any good if you walk at that door still lost. I want to introduce you this morning to a Savior that will save you from everything that you've gone through and will turn your upside down world upright and show you the way. Church, this all is up. No matter what your need is, bring it to Jesus this morning.